understand why it's a steady state and not an equilibrium. Okay, so you're drawing a membrane pretend, a membrane for us, and now we have two kinds of channels, right? We yep. have the, so the top channels are for what? We'll say for potassium. And the bottom channels are for sodium. Okay, so let's start with a, a base case that should be relatively simple to think about. Let's start with the concentration of potassium is 400 millimolar inside and 20 millimolar outside. And now let's have the sodium that's right, be 20 millimolar inside and 400 millimolar outside. Okay, let's look just at the potassium first. What's going to happen given the concentration differences? Well, there's going to be an outward flux of potassium ions. Good. So let's draw that. Yes. And that's J potassium, and that's concentration, right? Good. Mm -hmm. What about sodium ions? There'd be an inwards flux. Along the concentration gradient. Good. This is J sodium. Right. Oh, that's a now, if the permeabilities to potassium and sodium are equal, mm -hmm. what can you say about these two fluxes? Well, given that the concentration gradients are the same, relatively speaking, the fluxes should be equal and opposite. That's right. So, in terms of net charge across moving across the membrane, how much net charge moves across the membrane? You have potassium, with just positive charge flowing out, mm -hmm. and sodium, which is positive charge flowing in. Well, if there's an equal amount of positive charges flowing out due to potassium and sodium charges flowing in, then, or positive charges flowing in due to sodium, then the net movement of charge should be zero. Exactly. So the potential across the membrane will be? Zero millivolts. All right. Now, a harder question. Before, when we had equal and opposite fluxes, they were of the same ion. And we kept on emphasizing that that was an equilibrium. Mm -hmm. Here, do we have an equal flux of potassium in and out? No. No. So what will happen to the potassium concentrations as time goes on? They'll, so they'll move out. So if we draw sort of a non-existent arrow, which I'm going to draw as just a point, right. for both the potassium flux due to electrical mm -hmm. and the sodium flux due to electrical. Mm -hmm. So this isn't opposing the potassium flux. That's right. And so these are going to flow until these concentrations are equal, right? That's right. And the same with the, the sodium. Right. Now, how long will it take that to happen? A bit, probably. Yeah, it could take hours and hours and hours, maybe even days. Because this is just sort of passive movement. That's right. That's right. So it turns out that you're sitting at zero millivolts. Are you in equilibrium? When you have these concentrations? When you have these different concentrations. In no. Them. No. Because it's going to move. Right. But will the membrane potential change? If? For long, long periods of time. Before anything breaks down. Will you see any changes in the membrane potential? No. So you have to have another word for it's not an equilibrium in terms of energy, mm -hmm. but it's in something where it's not changing. We'll call that steady state. Okay. And the image I like to have is in the winter, if your room is a nice, comfortable 72 degrees Fahrenheit, mm -hmm. is that something that would continue to be true if the furnace broke down? No, it would get really cold. Exactly. So you are staying at a steady state, but you're doing so because energy is being injected into the system. Okay. Now, in this situation, we're saying the concentration breakdown is what has to be fought against, and that's going to require energy. So what do you need to keep the concentrations from breaking down? Well, you'd need a way of sort of pushing the potassium back into the cell and the sodium back out so exactly. you can maintain these... Concentration. And interestingly enough, biological organisms can do that. What do they use for that? It's like a pump, right? A pump, exactly. 